Hi everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today I want to share with you 5 style rules that I love to follow and 5 style rules I love to break. The idea of this video is that I want to share with you some of the style rules that really help me get ready in the morning and help me put together an outfit. And I also want to share with you some of the rules that by breaking them, I feel like it elevates and lifts my style. Keep in mind that for this video, this is just what's worked for me. Feel free to break the rules I follow, follow the rules I break, depending on what you prefer and what suits your style the most. All of the beautiful jewelry pieces that I'm wearing today are all from Majuri, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. Almost all of the pieces I'm showing today are not new to me, but they're pieces that I've repeatedly shown on this channel. So it's always a pleasure to work with Majuri. The first style rule that I always like to follow is the rule of three. And I like this one because it is so incredibly flexible. On the most basic level, it's the idea that when we have three things in an outfit, the outfit feels complete. So if you have a top, a skirt, adding the jacket just finishes the look. But the way I like to think about this is either in terms of color or how many key elements there are in an outfit. With color, having three key colors in the outfit I feel like is a really good number to have the outfit be interesting but not overdone. I like to include my shoes in the three color rule but not my bag. And the reason is my bag usually complements my outfit and I also put it down during the day so I don't want to only have two pieces on me and to have left the third one at my desk for example. To show you an outfit example of this, I've done a blue t-shirt, a yellow jumpsuit and then khaki slides. By adding on the bag, I don't feel like it messes with the three color rule and this outfit just feels very finished. Another example is this outfit where I've got the yellow blazer, the blue tee, and then the khaki slides. I don't include the white as a color here and this outfit feels complete. On the other hand, in this outfit, I've got the yellow top on instead of the blue and I don't think it's a bad look but I do feel like it's a little bit more incomplete and I do want to add something more to this look. The other way I like to use the rule of three is looking at how many key pieces there are in an outfit. So in this example, we've got the graphic tee, we've got the ribbing texture of the skirt that makes it a key piece, and then we've got an interesting uniquely shaped shoe, which would be my final piece. If I was to add a jacket to this look, it wouldn't really become the fourth piece if it was simple. So a black blazer or a navy blazer will complement the rest of the look and it wouldn't be a fourth piece that will compete with what I already have on. As I said before, I don't really like to include my bag in the rule of three. So for this outfit, the first key piece will be my black jacket with the gold buttons. I think the gold buttons is what makes it a key piece. We've got the same skirt and then we've got the graphic tee. The shoes here are really simple. So in this outfit, we still have three key pieces and I'm happy with the way it all comes together. The last way I like to use the rule of three is for accessorizing. If I'm doing a little necklace stack, three necklaces is a bit of a go-to for me. I feel like having four necklaces can look sometimes a little bit odd. So I usually go for three, if not five or seven. The same thing applies for rings. It's pretty common for me to do something like this. I would also just take the third ring and stack it on top of one of the other ones and go for three this way. On the other side of things, a rule that I really don't like to follow is that you should match your metals and wear silver with silver, gold with gold, whether that comes to jewelry or accessories and hardware in general. We all know that it's okay to mix metals, but I guess I'm mentioning this because I have heard this for so long, but I've only recently started to do it more myself. This is where I'm gonna talk about the jewelry pieces that I'm wearing right now from Majuri. And I'm also gonna talk about your hardware details, for example, your belt buckle, your bag, and how you can mix and match these for different looks. I'm gonna start off with my earrings and I've got on a silver and then a gold. So my silver hoop earring is a little bit different for me as I usually go for my larger hoop in gold. I really like that this silver hoop is a little bit chunkier and then has a pearl accent. The silver earring is not heavy, but it does feel quite substantial and just very high quality. So if you're looking for a silver hoop, I really have been a fan of this one. And then right next to it, I've got a mini gold hoop, which I've had for many years. I made sure to have at least one silver tone necklace because I much prefer it when the metals repeat throughout the look. So I've gone for a silver tone necklace here. This one is actually white gold with a little diamond. And then I've gone for two gold necklaces. These pieces are probably quite familiar as I frequently wear them. But this little pendant is new to me and this is a little scarab pendant in 14k gold. So this pendant also comes in a sterling silver if silver tones more your thing. But I like that it becomes the focal point of this little stack. For the rest of this outfit, I can kind of continue this pattern. 
So for my belt, I can do a suede belt with a silver crescent buckle. And then for my shoes or for my bag, I can opt for hardware that is gold. And having this gold and silver run throughout the entire outfit, I feel like it doesn't look out of place at all. And because it repeats consistently, it feels very tied together and harmonious. The second style rule that I always like to follow is thinking about balance and proportions. Not just in terms of oversized and more fitted, but also in terms of fabric and whether something is fluid or structured. I feel like when these four things come into the picture, we can really mix and match to get an outfit that feels balanced proportionally. I'm going to show you what I mean with this outfit where I'm wearing this really oversized structured navy trouser. The t-shirt I'm wearing is actually a little bit boxy and oversized as well. And the reason why I feel like this outfit works, or at least works for my own style, is because the t-shirt isn't structured. If the t-shirt was a thicker material, I really feel like this outfit would be too boxy. But because the t-shirt has a bit of slouch, because the fabric is more fluid rather than structured, I feel like it works in balancing out the look. The same thing applies for bags. I would go for a slouchier bag instead of a structured bag. The little things like that I think brings balance to an outfit. If I was to wear a blue shirt with these trousers, even though the blue shirt is actually a bit more fitted and slimmer than the t-shirt, this outfit will not feel balanced. And the reason is because there is no fluidity or softness in this look. Everything is very structured and the whole outfit feels not quite balanced. In another example, I'm gonna take a black wool trouser and the shape of this one is a little bit more fitted, but the material makes it quite structured. An unbalanced outfit would be if I was to wear this with a cami top that is knitted. In this outfit, even though the top is actually quite fitted to the body and then the trousers are slightly looser, this outfit isn't balanced because the materials are not quite right. If I was to take the same trousers and wear it with an oversized looser t-shirt, it actually feels feels more balanced because the material is soft and we get a good balance between our fabrics that we've chosen in the look. Taking into account fluidity and structure has really made putting together an outfit so much easier for me because I now understand why certain pieces work really well together and certain pieces don't. A sole rule that I really hate to follow is that if you're petite, you shouldn't wear long line things and you should instead go for shorter styles. This can sometimes be true, but not always, which is why I wanted to talk about it here. Some of the most flattering clothes on me are long line things that are not too voluminous. I find that it's often the volume of really long pieces that can drown someone petite, as opposed to the long item itself. Wearing a long skirt or dress in the summer or wearing a long coat in the winter can be flattering because it creates a long line, as opposed to cutting you off somewhere in the middle. In my example, I want to take this crop pant style and put it against the long full length style. I really do feel so much taller when I'm wearing the full length style and I know it's trendy right now, which is why I tried it in the first place, but I really think that it is very hard to go back having seen the difference. In the past, I was really worried that full length pants would just really drown me, it would be way too long, but I realized that it's nothing that a tailor can't fix and once you get it to the perfect length for you, it is just so flattering compared to something cropped. The idea behind this is quite simple where the longer pant just really tries to maximize how long your leg looks, whereas the other pant just cuts you off right at the ankle and it looks like your leg just stops over there. This is also not to say that I'll never wear a 7 8 length pant. They can be really casual, convenient to wear, but when I want to look the most flattering, I think full length is the way to go. The first style rule that I always like to follow is to wear complementary colors together. About a year ago, I did a video where I said I love complementary colors, but sometimes it feels a little bit too bold for my everyday style. And I think that's completely untrue now because there is so much versatility and flexibility for us to tailor the complementary colors to our own style. We can go as muted or as bold as we would like, and they can still be complementary colors on opposite the size of the color wheel. A good example would be all the yellows and blues that I really like wearing together. A lot of these are actually quite subtle and not that bold at all. I've worn this outfit combination many times before where I've gone for a blue t-shirt and this orange print skirt. These two complementary colors just look so good together and it is not a dramatic look. I've also got a blue and red combination. We've just gone tonal blue on the inside and thrown on the check blazer with a red accent color. I feel like this is actually very subtle, very 
very wearable, but the two colors just paired very beautifully together. I used to think that complementary colors had to look as bold as this one, when it can be as subtle as some of the outfit combinations that I've created. The first style rule, which I no longer follow, is from Coco Chanel, where she says, before you leave the house, look in the mirror and take one thing off. I feel like this quote and advice is really not targeted at me, because my style is quite simple and quite minimal to begin with. And based on the conversations I have with you guys, it seems like a lot of you guys also share this issue. So I feel like I've always known this quote and for the longest time, I was so afraid of over accessorizing, overdoing it. But to be honest, when you have very simple style, it's quite hard to overdo it with accessories. This one is one to tailor for your own style and just see what works best for you. But my mantra is more, put one more thing on as opposed to take one thing off. The fourth style rule that I like to follow is to build on your past outfits. If you had an outfit you love, don't let it go to waste and not wear it again, but wear it again and then also recreate outfits very similar to it, using the same idea. So yesterday, I actually wore this outfit and it's pretty much an exact recreation of an outfit I wore a few months ago using a t-shirt instead of the blouse. They're quite similar and I feel like it's such a waste when you wear a great outfit to only wear it once and I always try to recreate it in as many ways as possible for my future looks. Once I've exhausted this color combination, I can change up the colors but keep the proportion. I can keep the colors and change the pieces. I can basically just do whatever I can to maximize the number of times that I can wear this outfit because I know I loved it and it makes sense to try and re-wear it, recreate it in our wardrobe. The truth is that I don't love every single outfit I wear, so when I do love an outfit, I really do try to make the most of it and restyle it and see how far I can go with that look. The fourth style rule that I don't like to follow is to invest in basics and your wardrobe will come together. I think it's a lot more complicated than that because for years I was buying all the basics but I still had nothing to wear and I felt quite uncertain about my personal style. When buying basics, I think you really have to consider your personal style, your habits, how you like to put together an outfit and all of these things will make sure that your basics actually suit you. I know you guys probably know this one already but I just want to share it in some more detail things that I would look out for. I used to never wear basics like a t-shirt or a button-down shirt. And the reason is because I would start an outfit with my top and then I only owned simple bottoms. So I would pair all my fancier tops with a simple bottom. You can kind of imagine here that if I was to wear a t-shirt or a shirt and I paired it with a simple bottom, I would never feel like myself and I'll feel the outfit is really boring. The issue here is that the basics I chose out didn't take into consideration how I was getting ready and how I was getting dressed. So fast forward a few years to now, I have a few pairs of bottoms that I think are more statements, interesting silhouettes and proportions. So oftentimes I'll actually start an outfit with my trousers and then work backwards to my top. This is the reason why I now wear simple tops like a t-shirt and shirts a lot more. It's because I'm creating an outfit starting from the trouser as opposed to the top. I feel like I explained that in a slightly confusing way, but hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. I think it's just really important to take into account how you dress and how you put together a look. This is a topic I can probably talk about for an entire video, but the last example would be guys will tell you to buy based on color, to have a white pant and maybe have a navy or black pant. But I think that when you are doing this, it's also important to consider the fabric. You can kind of imagine that if I had a pair of white jeans to match with my blazers, it won't look as balanced as these fluid white trousers. Take into account the fabric and the rest of your wardrobe, I think is also just really, really important when choosing out basics. The final style rule that I love to follow is to mix your tried and tested pieces with one statement item. I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite statement pairings to give you a couple of ideas for your wardrobe as well. The first one is a simple pop of color and with color being very trendy right now, I feel like this is a fun one to try. A pop of color is so easy because we can probably all try to recreate this in our wardrobe in some way. You can put it in the bag, you can put it in the shoe, you can go for a colorful t-shirt and the list just goes on and you can really have so many potential outfit combinations. The second statement I might do is print mixing and especially with a graphic tee and a plaid blazer. This is a combination that I think is so good together because the graphic tee is a really large scale print and then the plaid blazer is a really micro print. So the two feel very balanced and it doesn't feel overdone or too messy. Something else to try is a necklace tag. I used to consider a necklace stack as only three necklaces but lately I've been trying five and seven 
and just really layering on the necklaces for a full statement necklace look. Seven necklaces might seem like a lot, but if your jewelry is quite dainty and minimal, the seven necklaces actually go together in a very natural way that doesn't look too overdone, but still being a statement. The last statement to make is just an unexpected color combination. There are so many colorful looks I admire, and almost all of them just have a color combination I don't see all the time. I love this little book actually, it's called The Dictionary of Color Combinations, and it has a lot of color combinations that I would not have really thought of, so it's really handy to take a browse. This is something I own, but don't feel like you need to have the book. You can definitely look on Pinterest for ideas as well, and it's just fun to try out color combinations that are a little bit different. A style rule that I really don't like to follow is that we have to match our bag to our shoes. Now there's nothing wrong with matching our bag to our shoes, but I would hate to do this all the time. And I just feel like it's a bit of a wasted potential. In an outfit, we only have a few places to accessorize our bag, our shoes, maybe a little bit of jewelry, a scarf, and then sunglasses. With our bag and shoes, to match the color and the texture sometimes, it is just putting the two accessories into one and we lose some of the potential potentially creative combinations we could have created with our bag and shoe combination. For example, I feel like realistically we probably don't have you know, a collection of brown bags to choose from, a collection of brown shoes to choose from. So we'll be constantly wearing the brown shoe we have and the brown bag we have together instead of being able to mix and match it freely. This is the reason why I don't like to match my bag and shoes. The look of it is usually okay but it's just that I can't mix and match as much. Those are the five style rules that I love to follow and the five style rules that I love to break. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I would love for you to go give it a thumbs up down below. And a thank you to Majuri for kindly working with me again in this video. Over the next week, I'll actually be moving. So moving from here to an apartment with my partner, I will be vlogging that experience or that kind of week. And I'll share that with you very soon. But I should have my video up same time next week and I will see you guys then. Bye.